Good morning, church. My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville. Welcome to this daily encouragement time, time to think about our faith and uh, our walk with God. Uh, it's an interesting time of year because it's the beginning of Lent. Many of you I saw yesterday as you came by to receive ashes at either in the noontime hour or that last evening at the Ash Wednesday worship service. But Ash Wednesday is an interesting time that's a uh, worshipped and and celebrated in many churches, but not all churches. Some churches uh, don't uh, recognize this particular season, but it brings us into this time of Lent, a time of thinking about um, the the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us, but also it's a time of preparation. It's a time of getting our own hearts and minds in the right places. Um, Ash Wednesday was first celebrated in the 11th century, as far as our records go, so it's not always been part of... um, Christianity, and it's not in the Bible in any way. Uh, But Lent uh, comes from the Old English. The word Lent comes from an Old English word meaning spring or new life, because it's talking about this new life that comes this time of year, but also the new life that we have through the resurrected Jesus Christ. And so this idea of uh, preparing ourselves is important. It's a 40-day period, not counting Sundays, because each Sunday is a mini resurrection Sunday. But each Sunday during Lent, we, we are each week day during Lent, we talk about this preparation that we have, and then Sunday mornings, of course, we gather today together to worship. You know, originally, uh, Lent was designed as a time for those who were preparing to be baptized on Easter Sunday that would, that would fast and pray and introspectively think about their lives to prepare themselves for baptism. So this fasting originally was only for those planning to be baptized. On Easter, but the but it was something to uh, help direct them towards being submissive to God's will in their lives, and others have picked that up over the years, and they also other people fast during Lent in one way or another from certain certain items that they like to do or something to remind them each time they think about doing this activity or eating this particular food, it reminds them that they are God's children and that we are mortal. Now, the ashes is an, a curious thing. The ashes represent basically our mortality and the fact that we're repenting. And this is uh, scripturally based. You remember if you received ashes before yesterday or before, uh, you remember this the line that we would say, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. Well, this directly comes from scripture. Um, I'd like to read a couple of scriptures from Genesis to help give you this thought. This is uh, Genesis chapter 2 starting with verse 4. This is actually the second creation story in Genesis. It says, In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no vegetation of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise up from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into it his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Now, we know this is a story of the creation of Adam or mankind. And I think for those of you that, um, there, there's multiple ways to understand this, but it's not meant to be a science text, okay? It's not meant to be, this is how uh, exactly this happened, because we don't know. But, but the, the original writers of Genesis were talking about that we are made of simple elements, that we, we come from the simple elements of the earth, and they're put together in a miraculous way by God, our creator. And we're put in this way and we breathe this breath of life because life is mysterious. Life is, uh, is like spirit, that, that God breathed God's spirit into us and it makes us human beings. And the second scripture I had was from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. This is God speaking to Adam after the fall, after he and Adam and Eve had uh, disobeyed God and done the things that they were told not to do. Uh, God is speaking to Adam to explain to him how tough life will be, that his life will not always be in a paradise of the Garden of Eden, but will be uh, dictated by the ways of the world. And so God says to Adam, By the sweat of your face and you shall eat bread until you, have returned, until you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. So there's where that line comes from. He says, you, For out of the ground you were taken, and for dust... You are dust, and to dust you shall return. So that's part of Genesis 3.19. So this idea of um, that we are, we are simple elements, and we come from dust, or we come from simple elements, and we go back to that. And ashes 
becomes a substitute for dust. Ashes becomes uh, another way of talking about dust. Because I'm sure if you're in an area that's burned a lot of wood or coal, that ashes was a big part of your life. And covering yourself with ashes became a sign of repentance, became a sign of um, showing that you were submitting to God, that you allow yourselves to be dirtied by something that was considered worthless, the ash, and, and to cover yourself with that. And there's many scriptures that talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> one of those is the, the book of Jonah. And you remember Jonah was uh, told by God to go to Nineveh to, tell, to warn the people that God was going to destroy them. And, of course, the story about Jonah... Um, being shipwrecked and then swallowed by a whale and ended up ended up doing what God had called him to do. So this begins Jonah chapter 3, starting with verse 4. So Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, and they called for a fast, and they put on sackcloth. From the greatest of them to the least, the word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and set in ashes. And we know that God uh, accepted their repentance. God accepted their turning back towards God and did not destroy the city of Nineveh. And so this idea of submitting ourselves to God's will is an important part of this whole story. Another one comes from the story of Job. And we know that Job went through a lot of trials as, uh, as God and the, uh, and the devil were fighting over Job's soul. And um, Job is submitting himself to God. Job understands that, that God is, is there for him. And he realizes that maybe he should, he should be repentant. And so um, Job then says, Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And so Job goes through this as well, where he says, God, if I've done anything wrong, I, I want, want to repent of that. I, I'm no longer worthy and I want uh, your forgiveness. And uh, a New Testament reference to this is uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, starting at verse 21. And Jesus is talking to the people, and Jesus says, Woe to you, Chorazon, and woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So Jesus is telling the people, you know, I, here I am, you've seen the miracles that I can do, you know who I am. And yet you still uh, resist. You still resist doing the things you're called to do and being the people you're called to be. So that's, this is what this is about. This idea of uh, covering ourselves or marking ourselves with ashes reminds us of our mortality, but also reminds us that we are God's children and that we, uh, um, our future is completely dependent on God. And uh, although we, we make decisions on this earth and we do the things where God calls us to do, we still have no control over how many days we live or, or what happens you know, throughout our entire lives. Now, the, the King Solomon wrote about this quite a bit in uh, his book, Ecclesiastes. You probably remember uh, one of the lines from Ecclesiastes that often gets quoted is, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And King Solomon, even though King Solomon asked for wisdom versus wealth and riches from God, King Solomon uh, found that wisdom is difficult too because the more you know sometimes the more you know you don't know and so King Solomon wrote about this extensively in uh, Ecclesiastes. Well the song I'd like to share with you today is one that was very popular when I was a young man and hopefully one that you enjoyed have enjoyed as well but it's a song by Kansas uh, a, a folk rock band in the 70s and it was written by a gentleman named Kerry Livgren, who is one of the members of Kansas. And around 1976 or 77 was when it was recorded. Excuse me, but the title of the song is Dust in the Wind. And I want to read the words to you and help you think about it just for a little bit. Because it starts off, I close my eyes only for a moment and the moment's gone. All my dreams pass before my eyes of curiosity. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Now, this sounds very dark, but I think it's not meant to be dark. I think what I'm saying, what I think it's trying to tell us is that life is fleeting, and we are called to make a difference each and every day, that uh, we can't just keep putting off the things that we know that we're called to do to some future date, because we don't know. We don't know when, uh, when our last day will be. The second verse, same old song, just a drop of water in an endless sea, all we do crumbles to the ground, though we refuse to see. 
so many times I think we allow our life to slip away and we're not, uh, we're not seeking to do the things God calls us to do, not seeking to serve others and to help and show love and grace. But each time it comes back with dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. And the third verse is don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky. It slips away and all your money won't another minute buy. So we don't take it with us. We only have the opportunity to do the things while we're here. We have a chance to make a difference, to leave a legacy, to help others to see God more clearly, help others to know that God loves them. So I'd like to sing for you, Dust in the Wind. I hope that you sing along and enjoy this uh, for what it is. That you have a joy-filled day, that you know that God loves you, right? We don't know how many days we have to do that. We don't know how many years we have left, and yet we know that God was with us every step of the way, that God continues to encourage us, and the legacy that we leave is not about monuments or buildings or riches, but it's about how much love we had in our heart and how much we've shared that with others. Go in peace and have a beautiful day.